Hi everybody, light is probably one of the most important factors in plant development and in nature the sun is the main source. But how much do you know about lights under controlled conditions, like in greenhouses for example? Greenhouse horticultural sector in the Netherlands is world leading, super innovative and in search of new knowledge. And today I'm going to visit an expert on this field, Professor Leo Marcellis. He's the head of the chair group of horticulture and plant physiology at Dagenham University. And you know what? He's really famous. He's like a rock star. He's on TV, on the radio, social media, on the newspapers, but maybe not yet in a blog. So let's have a look. Wow. Ah, hey, how are you? Yeah, hey, I'm fine. This looks really great. I have a couple of ideas. For the bananas? Uh, yes, for the bananas, of course. Of course. Okay, Leo, so we know that uh, we can grow plants under controlled conditions with big lamps that mimic the sunlight, mm -hmm. but we all know that you are playing with very fancy lights here. So what's the advantages to using the LEDs? Yeah, so the LEDs we use, they are more efficient in converting the electricity into the light. And then for me, the most exciting part comes how to convert it into, in this case, the cucumber fruit. So how to improve the photosynthesis, such that it grows more cucumber fruit of a better quality. Yeah. So you can actually manipulate the plant behavior with these LEDs? Sure, we do. And, and how do you do that? So making use of the color of the lamps, the right color, the right intensity, what moment of the day, but also where are the lamps positioned? Now they are here on top, but you could also bring them in here between. And exactly. what is then the optimal ratio? Huh? They can potentially work for every crop. Yes, I would say technically we can do it for every crop. Yeah. But it's not exactly the same, yeah, but we can I make understand. use of it. Some people think that it's not really sustainable to use uh, greenhouses. What do you think about that? Because especially in, in countries like the Netherlands, with the winter, you need to increase the temperature, right? Yes. So, what's your... so we use energy, a lot of yeah. energy, and that's also what we do in our research. This is what we want to reduce, not just by a few percentage, but in big steps, we want to reduce the use of energy. And that's what we focus our research on. You were involved in this space farming project, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we were involved in a, in a timescale project yeah. which focused on uh, production of how to grow vegetables in space. When people are there for a long time, they also would like to have fresh vegetables and how to grow them. So essentially it is real and we can really produce uh, vegetables in the space, all right? Yes, it is possible, but you just you can't, for instance, on Mars just grow them in the open. That's impossible. Okay, so what do you need? So then you need a controlled environment. You need underground or in a big building, so it's really like a vertical farm. Exactly, because you need to protect the plants. Yes, we need radiation. to shield them from the radiation exactly. and from all the bad climate that you're yeah. there. Extremely okay. cold, extremely hot. Have you considered to make a movie? Because you have been radio, television, now in a blog. So what about a movie? Oh. I have an idea. What about a horticultural professor astronaut that goes to maybe Mars? And then something goes wrong and then maybe he's hungry and he wants to grow... Potatoes. Yes, potatoes. Ah, there is maybe something already like that. Really? Oh, okay. So what are your plans? Well, I think it will stay here in Wageningen. There's still so much to do, so much interesting things to find out about the plants, <laughs> about the lights. Yeah, indeed. Okay, thanks for your time and to all of you, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.